So last week I had this brilliant idea, or at least I thought it was a brilliant idea. I decided to do what I call a live stream review of a Linux distribution, and it's exactly what it sounds like. I actually reviewed a Linux distro live in a live stream, and it was full of all kinds of technical difficulties, but it was still fun. I still plan on doing this again when I have more time to actually perfect the idea. But the distro that I decided to review in that video, in that live stream, was Bodhi Linux 6. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed my time with that distribution, but I had some problems. I couldn't even get it installed. I don't know why. For some reason, when I installed Bodhi Linux 6 on this laptop right here, I just couldn't get anything on the screen. It was just a blank screen when it restarted, and it worked fine in live mode, so I was really confused by that. So off camera, I decided to reinstall it and check it out, and you know what? It worked fine. I have no idea why. But I couldn't leave the review like that. And I also spent some additional time with Bodhi Linux 6, so I wanted to do a review, a proper review, of Bodhi 6 because I felt like I'd be doing a disservice to the distribution by leaving the review in its current state with me being unable to install it, and considering that I was able to install it, you know, when I tried again, I felt it was time to do a proper review, which is what this is. So let's go ahead and dive into Bodhi Linux 6 again. So what you're seeing on the screen right now, again, is Bodhi Linux 6. I have it fully installed on my first generation ThinkPad X1 Extreme. And like I mentioned in the intro, I had some trouble during the live stream review with the installation, and I'm a bit confused because, well, here it is installed and it's working just fine. I'm not really sure why I had trouble during the live stream review, but my leading theory is that when I checked the box to install proprietary drivers, it automatically installed the NVIDIA driver, but there was something with that NVIDIA driver that wouldn't actually show anything on the screen. I have no idea why that is, but all things considered, I was able to get it installed. And as an aside, I always try to install a Linux distribution on my actual hardware when I do a review on my channel, because I feel like that's the best way to get a true feeling for how fast and efficient a distribution is. Nothing beats real hardware. If I do use a virtual machine, I'll let you guys know. But thankfully for this review, you are actually seeing this running installed on my actual hardware. Now the installation process is fairly straightforward, and there's not really a lot for me to mention in regards to that. Just like most distributions nowadays, Bodhi Linux 6 gives you a live environment that you can use to demo the distribution before you commit to actually installing it on your hardware. And then you basically go through all of the questions that the installer asks you, and off you go. The installation process wasn't the longest, it wasn't the shortest, but it got the job done. And as you can see, it's fully installed. If you are new to Bodhi Linux, then the first thing you'll probably notice as you check out this release is that this distribution has quite a character of its own. It's quite unique to say the least. And I don't mean that lightly. Nothing else looks like this. To say that this is a very unique distribution of Linux would be an understatement. It looks like nothing else that's available. It claims to be an enlightened distribution, which is a play on Buddhism. I'm a big fan of Buddhism myself, so I find this aspect especially neat. And the name of the distribution as well is also a play on Buddhism. Bodhi refers to the sacred tree that the Buddha is said to have sat underneath when he achieved enlightenment. So it's definitely a fun premise for a distribution of Linux. And that philosophy does make its way into various aspects of the distribution itself, such as the fact that fewer applications are installed by default compared to other distributions. So if I go to the application menu here, and then go to Applications, you can see that there's a few applications installed, but not quite as many as you might be used to seeing in other distributions. Part of Buddhism is honoring personal choice. You want to go your own direction, make your own decisions. And that's a great thing for a distribution because you might not want everything installed by default, 
perhaps you want to choose the applications that resonate with you. Now, if this is the first time that you have ever seen Bode Linux, you might not be aware of what desktop environment this even is. And you may even think that this looks like a stripped down XFCE. I mean, we do have a panel down here at the bottom and you can achieve a similar look in XFCE, but this is actually a desktop environment known as Moksha. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. And the default look and feel of the implementation of Moksha in this release has a lot of green, as you can see. And I don't mind that because green is my favorite color. And you could probably tell that by looking at the logo for this channel, which is also green. So there's definitely no shortage of green in this distribution, which makes me happy. Now, of course, if green is not your preferred color, that might be a problem. But overall, I think it looks great. And the Moksha desktop here features a panel at the bottom of the screen. As you can see here, we have an application menu on the left hand side, which I showed you earlier. We have some shortcut icons here. And on the right hand side, we have tray icons for things like your Wi-Fi connection, battery, and even notifications. And what's odd here is that I received a bunch of notifications, as you can see, but for things like increasing the volume, well, that's a little weird. I don't need to see a notification every single time I increase or decrease the volume. But aside from that, it is effective. If you want to get back to notifications that you didn't get a chance to look at earlier, you'll find them here in this list. And then we have workspaces on the right, which is pretty cool. So we can switch between workspaces. So if I was to open an application, here's Thunar, the default file manager. I could switch between the different workspaces. Now, you're probably thinking that the window size here is small and the mouse cursor is even smaller. Well, you're right. There's some serious scaling issues here in Bode Linux, which I'll get to in just a moment. Now, at first glance, this probably looks like your traditional desktop environment. After all, you have a panel at the bottom. You have the ability to launch applications from the application launcher that's also on the panel and you have all the traditional elements that you would expect to find in a traditional desktop. But as you use Bodhi, you'll discover some really neat things as you go along. For example, at one point the screensaver was about to come on, but I wasn't done reading what was on the screen, so I reached for my mouse to cancel the screensaver, and Bodhi Linux actually noticed that I canceled the screensaver in a hurry and gave me some options as far as what to do about it. It gave me the option, for example, to change the timeout or even enter presentation mode, which actually disables the screensaver. And presentation mode is actually a very clever idea, especially if you're like me and you're recording a YouTube video and you don't want the screensaver to come on while you're talking. They actually noticed that I canceled the screensaver quickly and gave me an option to do something about it. That's very helpful. And in addition to that, something else that I discovered and I discovered this from someone in the live stream, was that you can roll up windows. So if I actually position the mouse cursor on the title bar of the window here, I can scroll my mouse wheel up and the entire application rolls into the window border. That's pretty cool. So of course we can minimize applications as well, but you don't have to minimize something to get it out of the way. You can simply roll up the window. So I'll open up a terminal. And I could do the same thing. And I like that because I don't feel like you have to see the contents of every application all the time. Maybe you still want the application represented on the screen, but you're done with it for now. You want to keep it somewhere on the screen where you can easily get back to it, but you just don't want the contents of that window to take up screen real estate. And in this desktop, you can do that. And the ability to roll up windows isn't specific to this desktop. I was able to do that in OpenBox as well. And you know what? When I switched to GNOME, I actually missed that feature of OpenBox quite a bit. Now, when it comes to default applications, we have Chromium, actually, as the web browser of choice. Now, Chromium, I felt, was a very interesting choice for a default browser, especially with all the controversy recently of Google Sync services being removed from Chromium in order to try to force people to use proper Chrome. I think Firefox would have been a better choice here, but there's nothing stopping you from installing whatever browser you want if Chromium isn't your cup of tea. 
And for the file manager, I already had Thunar up on the screen a moment ago, and here it is. The scaling is a little bit off, but Thunar is a great file manager. And if you've ever used a distribution that uses the XFCE desktop environment, then you've probably used Thunar at one point in the past. Thunar is not specific to Bode Linux. And why should it be? Why develop an entire application if an existing application more than meets your use case? In this case, the developers must feel that Thunar is fine, and I'd have to agree. It's definitely a decent file manager. Now the terminal, that's especially interesting. It looks like no other terminal emulator that's out there. I really like this one. It's called Terminology, and it's just fantastic. You can actually do splits, horizontally and vertically, as you see. And I even like how the right-click menu enters into the screen. That's pretty cool. Now that I have this open, we may as well take a look under the hood at various things in this release. First of all, you might be wondering what Bode Linux is based on. And I apologize that the text here is very small and hard to read, but if you're having trouble seeing this, what it shows in the output is that this is based on Ubuntu 2004.2 LTS. In addition to that, this release comes with Linux kernel 5.8. And that kernel is several versions old. I mean, it's decent. It's not the oldest kernel that you can still get in a distro nowadays, but again, it's several versions old. But that might not be a problem. Ubuntu LTS will feature newer kernels. They will backport those kernels to the current LTS when they are featured in a newer release, so we should get a newer kernel before too long. Now what I'm going to do is just make sure I have everything closed out here, except for the terminal. And what I want to do is take a look at the memory usage. Now I must have something open in the background because earlier when I checked this on a clean desktop, it only showed 300 megabytes of RAM being used. Now when I did the live stream review, it was using quite a bit more RAM than that, but then I reminded myself in live mode, well, you can't really judge the resource usage of a distribution in live mode because it's going to always use more RAM than it would if it was installed on real hardware. It was using about 800 megabytes, I think, 700 or more, something like that. But now it's using just over 400 megabytes. So if you want to run this on an older computer, then it should work out great. In fact, your computer doesn't have to be older because if you just don't want your resources to be used for no reason, then this might be a great fit for you. Now, so far, Bode Linux is awesome, and I like it quite a bit. But where it started to break down for me was in terms of hardware support. Now, currently, the NVIDIA driver isn't set up. I'm running off the integrated graphics driver currently, and that's because I didn't check the box during installation this time to have it install proprietary drivers. I did the first time during the live stream and I wasn't able to get anything on the screen at all. I'm not 100% sure if why it's working now is because I didn't check that box, but it is the only thing that I did differently this time around. But now that I do have this installed, I didn't find an easy way to actually install the NVIDIA driver. Sure, I could just apt install the package and that would work just fine, but it seems that Almost, if not all, distributions of Linux that are based on Ubuntu give the user a very easy way to get proprietary drivers installed if they need them. For example, on Ubuntu, you can click on Additional Drivers, select the checkbox for NVIDIA, and you're done. But for some reason, Bode Linux does not expose that to the user, at least as far as I can find. And I really don't understand that because it's not like they would have to engineer something custom they could just simply include the package that Ubuntu includes to give users that ability. So why didn't they? But the bigger problem for me is that Bode has very inconsistent support for high DPI displays. In the Applications menu, if I go to Settings, and then Settings Panel, we have a bunch of options here. And right here on the first tab, we have an option for Scaling. And I had to basically crank it all the way up to 2.2 for you to be able to see most of what you're seeing on the screen right now. Otherwise, everything is super tiny. Increasing the scaling did fix quite a bit of the problem, but as you can see from the terminal, the font size here is too small. The setting for scaling 
didn't actually have an impact on the terminal. And it didn't even seem to have an impact on the file manager as well. But even worse, the mouse cursor, and I'll put it along the terminal here so you can better see it because it has a dark background, is just super tiny. During the live stream, I actually had to downgrade the resolution to 1080p in order for my viewers to be able to see anything. So high DPI support, or I should say the inconsistent support for high DPI in Bode Linux has been very, very frustrating for me. And I get it, not everyone has a high DPI display, but they are becoming increasingly common and they do exist, so things like this definitely need to work. And you know what? Issues with high DPI support is actually my biggest and possibly my only complaint here. Everything else about Bode Linux is awesome. It's a lot of fun to use. I love the theme. It has very low resource usage. It looks very pleasant. It's just overall a pleasure to use and I highly recommend that you check it out. I mean, not everyone has a high DPI display so you might not even have that problem either. I think what we're left with is a quality distribution that I think a lot of you are going to enjoy. So let me know what you think of Bode Linux in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.